Good morning, children. You are all welcome to Sunday school. I hope you had a nice week. Shall we pray? In Jesus' name, everlasting Father, King of glory, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence today. We thank you for the children. We thank you for the parents. We thank you for the teachers. Glory be to your holy name. Lord, as we are here this morning, we are here to hear your word. Jesus, come and teach us. Teach our teacher. Help us to be good boys and girls. And at the end, O oh Lord, take all the glory and bless us mightily. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Children, you are all welcome to primary pass class. Our lesson this morning is lesson 12a, titled, Power to Work for Jesus. Our memory verse is, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Our text is taken from Acts chapter 1 verse 4 verse 8 chapter 2 verses 1 to 6 14 to 18. But we are only going to read Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to six. Shall we open our Bible, children, to Acts chapter two, verses one to six. Verses one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Two, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of, as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Three, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them. Four, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with different tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Five, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Six, and when this was noise abroad. The multitude came together and were confounded because that every man had them speak in his own language. Close your Bible, children. Children, I want you to look up at this. This is a circle, but it is not complete. We have just two third of the circle there. One third is salvation, and the other one is sanctification. Then where is the other one third? The other one third is our lesson for today. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. Children, like we said now, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Before we can have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we must have been saved from our life of sin. Sanctified with the blood of Jesus. And then we pray further. We move closer to Jesus to fill us with his spirit. Jesus told his disciples that they should wait in Jerusalem that they are going to receive the promise of his father. And what is the promise of his father? The baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
The disciples obeyed. And they were all in one room, like we read in our Bible. They were all together praying in one accord. No arguments. Because they have been sanctified. They are holy. They have been prepared for the Holy Ghost. They were all together praying. And as they were praying, in that room, the Holy Spirit came down upon them in the form of a mighty rushing wind and descend on each of them like fire. They were filled with the Spirit of God. And they were bold to tell people about Jesus. When the Jews heard what happened, Peter got up and told them, we are not drunk, but this is the promise of God that has been prophesied by Joel in the Old Testament is coming to fulfillment. Also, children, after that certification, I will pray further and press on. Jesus will fill us with the Spirit. And when we have the Spirit, what do we want to do with it? It will give us power. To do what? To walk for Jesus. We'll be able to walk for Jesus. As a Christian, we need to be complete. And to be a complete Christian, we must be saved, sanctified, baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Our statement for today's lesson is real power. Real power. Ages 2 to 5 activity. Find and circle the hidden words in the puzzle. Ages 6 to 8 activities. Write down two correct answers. Our next week lesson is lesson 12B. Title, The Miracle at the Gates. And the memory verse is, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Thank you, children. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Our key verse for the week is, Thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. Acts chapter 22, verse 15. Good morning children and welcome to your answer lesson. This morning you have a wonderful lesson titled Used of God. Wow, who doesn't want to be used of God? I do and I'm sure you do. So let's sit back and enjoy this lesson. For our Bible reading this morning we have a text and the text is found in many places. You can find it in Acts chapter 6 verse 1 to 6. Acts chapter 8 verse 5 to 8 and Acts chapter 8 the same chapter verse 26 to 40 but we're only going to focus on the middle one which is Acts chapter 8 verse 5 to 8. 5 then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them 6 and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Seven, for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. Eight, and there was great joy in that city. As an introduction to this lesson, you know the title is all about used by God. And the man that was greatly used by God was Philip. And because he had the baptism of the Holy Ghost and he gave his life to God, God could use him greatly. 
That's the same way you need to have your three Christian experiences. Be saved, be sanctified and baptized with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because God requires that you have it to be very powerful and effective to serve him. Without it, you would not be able to serve God as powerfully as Philip did. And also, you need to consecrate, which means you need to set yourself aside and make sure you give yourself wholly to God by paying some prices, little things, denying yourself for some pleasures so that you can fulfill God's calling on your life. A few object lessons here for us to understand the talents that God has given some of us to be used by him. I've got paint brushes here and a palette. Well, you know what this stands for. Those who God have given a creative or artistic talent. Musical instrument, violin, wow. Some of you are very good at this. That could show too. And then you have some handy things like the hammer and saw. These are people who are more into construction and repairing. And wow, some people are given these talents to be used by God. Wow, a simple dustpan and brush. Some people are given that talent to be used by God. And, whoa, cooking. Wow, so these all show the different talents and abilities that we are given by God to be used for his work. Isn't God amazing? And he gives it to all of us in different abilities. And I pray that the one God has given you, you will be able to use it to serve him faithfully. Our lesson story talks about a man called George. Would you like to be like him? He was used greatly. As a young boy, he got saved, sanctified and baptized with the Holy Ghost. You know, he was a ready helper. He helped to pick up hymn books in his first camp meeting. Then he started to play his instrument. He sang. Then he ended up leading the orchestra. He was a soul winner, helped people get saved. He was a sound Bible teacher. And finally in his life, he was a missionary to Africa. Wow, what a man. Right, for our main activity, I wanna give you a checklist so you can remember the things that you can do to be used of God, maybe in your branch church, maybe where you're serving, this is good for you to remember. One, you can be used in the music department. A lot of you are involved in this. It's a great one by singing and playing your musical instrument. But some of you might not know that even being a friend is a great way to be used of God because a lot of you are a little bit more friendly and you can use that to win your friends and win them as a soul winning system in your church. You become their friend, you invite them to church. Art, wow, a lot of you have this. I have this one too. You can help the Sunday school department in making sure that the things that are put up on your bulletin board in church look good. Always volunteer. Tell your teacher, reading. Oh, when we have children's programs, some of you are so good in reading memory verses and you're so good in reading out loud to the congregation, it can come in handy. Acting, this comes in really good in children's programs. Always volunteer. Cleaning and organizing. Always be assisting people who you see are cleaning. And even if no one, be like George, who just volunteered and helped. Cooking, oh, you might be thinking, can I? I know a lot of you have cooking skills because I remember in the lockdown you shared it. Why don't you always remind your teacher, I want to volunteer to bring some cookies to my class people today. It can help in making things wonderful. Writing, a lot of you can be involved in even writing the script for the children's program. Don't leave it all to the, to the teachers. Uh, tech skills, you might be wondering where this comes in. A lot of you know how to use things like uh, PowerPoint, editing videos. You can always volunteer your skills to help your teachers. 
and simply courtesy skills. Opening the door, helping people, saying thank you, welcoming people. All these things are things that you can be useful and use for God in your church. So there are no excuses. Once you get your experiences and you dedicate your life to God, get out there and do something for him. There were so many questions in our lesson this week, but one of them that I thought was important for us to understand is, what does it mean to be faithful? Because a lot of us, you know, I've asked in my class and they said it's to be full of faith. Well, that's not exactly what this means. Being faithful means that we are able to be true to anything that we do for God. Anything that we do for God will be true to it. Whether people are watching or whether people are not, we become dependable. God can depend on us. And that's what we want to be once we start serving God. May God help you to be faithful. Statement for the week is, I will be willing to be used by God in his work. I hope all of us will be able to do that. And to summarize this wonderful lesson, well, it's great. It's so great to be used by God. It's so great to be used by God. But if we really want to be effective, we must be filled with the Holy Spirit and we must consecrate our lives to him. Remember, we talked about that. It means setting ourselves aside and making sure that we dedicate our life by, you know, leaving some things that may be pleasurable, but we know that if we really want to serve God, we need to give him our time. And time, you know, is costly. So I want all of you to just remember that if you're going to serve God wholeheartedly, it's going to cost you something. But why not? Because Jesus paid the greatest price for us anyway. For our activity, there are some places that Jesus sent his disciples to preach the gospel. You need to look at the flag on the left and find those places in the jumbled words on the right. Wish you the best. Next week, we have a wonderful lesson titled Ready for Battle. It's lesson 102. Wow, that's us becoming powerful. Pardoned prepared and powerful. Please remember to read this lesson. It's going to be great. Thank you for listening and it's time to pray now. We thank God, oh Lord, for our primary power lesson this morning. We thank you for the answer class lesson this morning. We are praying that Lord, you touch our hearts with your word and help us to love you and serve you so that we can make heaven at last. Bye. Thank you boys and girls for joining today's Sunday school. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.